Okay, so we're going to start making the mousetrap car. The things you'll need in your packet, hopefully you've got these so far. And please check in your packet when you watch this to make sure you have all these parts. You will need a power dowel, which is just a quarter inch dowel that's 12 inches long. You'll need two body length wood for the, for the body. You'll need a mouse trap, of course. You'll need a length of string that is uh, 24 inches. You'll need a wooden axle and you'll need a metal axle. You'll need two wheels for the front and these will be different colors, they won't be yellow. This is for the stabilizing on the back and two uh, electrical ties. You'll also need two of these small yellow objects that I'll explain a little bit later on how those work in your, in your car. So make sure that you have all these things so that you can make your car um, and make sure you have all the parts. Now, if you lose any of these parts, that means you have to come up with them yourself. So don't lose any of these parts. Alright students, I'm going to go through the steps on how to put your mousetrap car together. Uh, the first thing I need to talk to you about is your mousetrap. Now some of you that have never set a mousetrap before, this is going to be an interesting experience for you because now you have to, so you go, you hold it in your hand like this, make sure that you have the, the copper wire. You notice it's got a little crook in the end here. All right, so you're going to pull this over and be careful not to let it go. Bring the wire over like this. You have to switch hands and then hook it on to hook it on to the little metal part like this. Okay, I'm doing this by myself so I Okay, I thought maybe I might give you a little bit better demonstration on how to set a mousetrap. All right, the wire I was talking about looks like this. Okay, it's got a little crook on the end that you can see right here. A little crook right here on the end. And that little crook is going to be set inside that little uh, hook on the actual mousetrap part. So here we go, we're going to Take this like this, we're going to move it over and be careful not to hit your fingers. Okay, once you've got that set, you're going to come over and put the little tab, the little crook onto the side of the mousetrap, just like this. Now be careful when you pick it up because you'll snap at any time. Okay, so it'll be hooked like this. So if you're wondering how to set that mousetrap, that's how to do it really can't give you a close-up of this but this is how you set the mousetrap when you get ready to uh, use a mousetrap very simply you flip that and you get it catches the mouse that's how it works now you might want to try that a couple of times but be careful with your fingers you might decide that you might not they might not like you okay so the first we're going to start with is your two is your two sticks. Now I want you to make sure that your axles fit. Now you notice one hole is small and one hole is big. The small hole is for your front axle and you're going to put that in there and make sure it turns very easily. Alright? That's the first thing you're going to do. Second thing you're going to do is you're going to put this in. make sure that it turns also very easily okay if it doesn't go in smoothly then it's not going to work okay so this one goes in easily and turns very nicely and this one goes in very easily and turns nicely. So what happens if the holes are not big enough? Well, that causes friction and it causes that your car's not going to go very fast. 
All right, the next thing you will also need is either a hot glue gun, which is faster, you don't have to have a hot glue gun, or you can use just good old Elmer's glue, which you're gonna to have to take a little bit longer to um, let the glue dry, okay? So just have that aside, make sure you've got it plugged in, ready to go. All right, this little piece right here, I told you was a stabilizer. Now, you wanna have the mouse trap at the front of your car, so where the small axle holes are. And you want to make sure that you glue this on so that when it springs, that it takes your power rod and pulls the string up to the front. Okay, that's what the idea behind the mousetrap car is. Okay, so I'm going to, in other words, it looks like you might have to do this backwards, but it really is front and soul. If I go like this and I hold it with my thumb, and again, be careful. And I put it like this, right at the front. That means that when that mouse strings like this, then it's gonna come up and it's gonna go. All right, so, ow, that kinda hurt. So I'm going to put it right right here at the front of my car. I'm gonna take it back here to measure back about an inch or so you don't have to be too accurate and put just a tiny bit of glue well some glue right here on your stick right there And be careful, the hot glue gun is hot. That's why it's called the hot glue gun. Make sure you've measured both of these accurately, because if you don't, your axles will be crooked and your car will go in a crooked line. Make sure you let it sit for a few minutes so that it's nice and solid. Check to make sure you have the front of your car pretty close. Okay, that looks good. Okay. Now, this one, this small one, will go in the back of the car. That's so that the boards don't wobble back and forth like this. So I'm gonna put it right about there. I'm going to mark it so that I know it. And there's no exact place to put it. Just make sure it's even across. Now, if you're using Elmer's glue, you might have to uh, hold this for a few minutes in order to let that to dry. So we'll count to about 10. Hot glue takes a little bit longer to dry than most. Okay, so it looks like that's set in place. And now we have the base for our mousetrap car. That wasn't too hard, was it? Okay, now, if you don't put your mousetrap on properly, You'll have to cut it off and re-glue it on the other side. So now let's put the axles on. <clears throat> Next thing we're going to do is we're going to put the axle on. We're going to put the ones in the front on first. <clears throat> the best thing I can tell you to do is this is going to be really tough to get through here. So if you have something that you can tap with, like a little hammer, and because I'm in the shop, of course, I have my mallet. You tap it till it goes all the way through. 
Put it through your hole. And give it a spin. Make sure it's clear. Okay? Make sure that's clear, like this. Now it spins pretty good. All right? I'm off the ground so that I'm okay there. Okay? All right. The next thing we need to do is we need to make our back axles. Now, it's kind of interesting. This has got a pre-drilled hole in it. Okay, the reason I have the hole in there is because that's how you're going to wind your string up on the back side of your uh, on the back side of your wheels. Now, if you notice on my car that I have two CDs. Now these CDs have in the middle a quarter inch hole. Now if you notice, look what's in the middle here. That's one of those yellow snapper things right here. Okay. So, if you have a couple of old CDs around your house that nobody's listening to anymore, that's scratched and really bad, that nobody wants, you'll need two of them, and that's what you're going to use for your back wheels. Now, I didn't put that in the kit because I don't have that many. I've got a few around here that I use, but for the most part, I don't have them. So, I'm going to go get two of them, and... So I have my two CDs. You take the yellow snap in, and you're gonna to have to push this in pretty hard until it snaps. Try not to break your CD. There it is. You have to push pretty hard. Okay, now I have had students before when they put this in, they've broken the CDs. So be really careful when you put this in, okay? You don't need any glue or anything to hold this in. It stays in by itself, it snaps in. Now you're going to put your axle in. Now this might take just a little bit of glue because it kind of spins on you. And if you don't keep it solid, then you're going to find that when your wheels start to turn, that the axle will turn and your wheel won't. So it depends on what you've got in yours. We'll just have to see. I'm going to put just a tad bit of hot glue on there. That's just so that it makes it so it sticks maybe a little bit better. Okay. I'm going to push that through. Now if you notice in your, in your kit, I've also given you a little piece of sandpaper. Now remember that sandpaper is to cut maybe some of the rough edges out that you need. And I'm going to sand off. This hole's a little bit rough when we drilled it. It was a little rough. So I'm going to sand this just a little bit before I put it through. And anything else that you think you need to have sanded a little bit, you probably ought to sand a little bit just to make it smooth so it might run a little bit better. Okay, that took that burr off of there, so that's good. Now we'll put this through, like this. Okay. Put a tiny bit of glue here, and it's going to be hot. So, well, I'm not going to do this one. Because I've already got one of them stuck. I don't need to get the other one in case I need to get the wheel off. So now I'm going to put this one on. At this point, you now have, OK, 
okay? You've got your mousetrap card. Notice how easily that turns or that goes. So take it someplace, give it a nice push. Okay, I just noticed that the front of this car, okay, is going to have a difficult time I'm touching, almost touching the floor. Now, check yours right there. Check yours to make sure that you're not touching the floor. So that looks pretty darn good. Okay, now put your car aside and take out your dowel. Get your dowel. And set where you want to. All right, at the beginning right here, you're going to mark two inches. Maybe color it a little bit to remind you. That's going to be with your mouse trap. That's what's going to be hooked on with your mouse trap. And then you're going to measure in increments one inch. Every inch, put a mark like this. up to 11 inches. Don't go all the way to 12, just go to 11. Okay? And that's how I want you to mark out your dowel, just like that. Okay, so you're going to measure off. Start with two inches. Hopefully you can see this. Yep, you can. Okay, put a mark at two inches. That's going to be where it's going to be put onto the mouse trap. And then every inch beyond that I want you to put a mark okay and I'm, I'll tell you why we're doing that in just a minute all right, now, here we go. The two inches is what's going to be attached to your mouse trap. Where you put that two inches, this first two inches is gonna be attached to your mouse trap. Now comes in your ties. Now I don't care if you put it on the right or the left, it doesn't matter, but put it on one of the sides. Put it through, tighten it down really tight. You might have to have some help by maybe your brother or sister or your mom or your dad to help tie that down, okay? So you have the one on the front and you have the one on the back. Now, if you have extra ties at home, you're more than welcome to use three ties instead of two, like I do. Also, make sure you put it in the right way. If you put it in backwards, it doesn't work. Pull it really, 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 really tight. I just noticed I put mine in the wrong way. So I'll just slide that through like this. See, even teachers make mistakes once in a while. Okay, so in the past, I have had students who have put a little bit of hot glue on here. Because there's a quite a bit of force that's gonna come around and get that thing to work. So I am going to put a little bit of hot glue on this so that it holds just a little bit better. We don't put much on here.
that's pretty good. It's going to hold pretty good. Now be careful on this because you might find yourself having some problems. You can also get a pair of scissors and you can snip off the ties. Okay. All right, so it's going to go like this. It's going to flip it like this ahead. Okay, which is going to make the back swills go. Okay, just like that. All right, now let's attach the string. Where'd my string go? <clears throat> At the top, where your first mark is, I'm going to have to remark these. So give me just a second because Mr. Goff really did a dummy thing. We have 24 inches of string. You're going to tie it around the top where you made your top mark. Now if you don't like using this string, because it does sometimes unravel, if you have some kite string at home, or something else that you'd like to use, you are more than welcome to change things. Okay? So that's going to be right there. We'll try it again. Okay, so now what do we do? Well, you know that hole that we have in our axle back there? Now we have to wind it around that back axle. So hold this, like this, and there might be have to have someone help you do this, but feed it through that hole. And a little trick I use right there is I got a little bit of uh, tape, a little bit of scotch tape, and I put it on the end of there to make that solid, so it'll make it go through the hole better. Now, some of your parents may remember many years ago when we, when you couldn't, there we go. All right, so, I just lost it. Don't let go of this. Somebody's going to have, probably have to help you. <laughs> I promise it works. And you want to wind it backwards so the car will go forward. There we go. Okay, set your mouse. 
like that. Okay. Now I've got, let's see, that's going to work. That's going to work. All righty. So, move all the stuff out of the way. And be careful not to hit yourself. And go like this. And it goes all by itself until it completely unwinds. Now you notice when it unwinds, it keeps going. So you're going to see how far this thing goes. Now the reason I had you mark this off, the reason I had you mark this off is because you're going to do a little experiment. After you make this, you are going to then tie the string or slide the string down on each mark. You're then going to measure to see how far each one of those goes and then you're going to put this on a worksheet um, on canvas. And that's the idea behind this is, is to, it's an engineering experiment to see how far the car will go each time you take it down another measurement. So if I take this down like this another inch and then I wind the string up again Okay, then it's going to go maybe longer, maybe shorter. Just just depends on what you've got. Now you can't have your car go on carpet. It can only go on a solid floor. Um, I know some of you might have tile. Some of you might have a wood floor. Um, some of you might have a really long driveway. Make sure it's flat. Don't cheat on us by by uh, going on a slanted driveway, especially if you're going downhill. That's a little bit of a cheat. Uh, but try to make it on something really flat, maybe a really long hallway or someplace like that. If you can't, do it on the sidewalk or whatever you've got available for you. But make sure it's consistent. Make sure you start at the starting point and measure exactly where you're at. Now, I don't expect you to measure into, into uh, fractions of an inch. Uh, but the idea behind this is to make sure that you measure it to about, if you went six and a half feet, then measure six and a half feet close enough to it, usually round up. I usually tell you to round up, not down. Okay? Well, hopefully you understood how to put this together. Have fun with this. Um, after you get done with it, you can experiment with it a little bit more. Um, if you want to try to put longer string on it, you can put a longer string on it, but uh, you might want to make sure that you do it. Now, on the ends like this, I know you can't see that, but on the end, I put the mask, I put the scotch tape on the end and so it doesn't unravel. You can put scotch tape on the other end so it doesn't unravel there too, so you can tie it, it might make it a little bit easier for you. Well, have fun with this. It's a, it's a cool activity. Hopefully it'll get you away from doing all the book work that you've had to do over the last couple of days. All right, if you have any questions, make sure that you contact me. Um, you can either do it by, over uh, Google Message, or excuse me, Google Hangout, or you can contact me through email. But I look forward to hearing from you. All right, thanks, bye. Come mm -hmm.